Hello, I'm going to explain why sidereal charts based on a fixed star are slightly inaccurate. Now this may sound odd because we are told and we read very often that that's what a sidereal chart is. For example, the sidereal chart with the Lahiri Ionamsha has spica at zero Libra and uh, the Fagan-Bradley Ionamsha puts the fixed star Aldebaran at exactly 15 degrees Taurus. That's what we're told, that's what we read, it seems like the reasonable thing to do, but two very odd things. Number one, if you were to do this, if you were to actually base your sidereal chart on a fixed star, the consequences of that lead to some things that I think are unreasonable, and I'll, I'll show you. And number two, we don't actually do that, even though we're told that the sidereal chart ha using Lahiri Ionamsha has spica at zero Libra, and we're told that over and over again, and every educated astrologer knows that, it's actually not quite true um, for, for most people, the way calculations are normally done. So what's going on here? We're told one thing, but it's not really true? Yep, I think so, I, and I'll explain it. By the way, this is part three of a series of videos on the astrological ages. I will be talking about the Ayanamsha and the astrological ages. If you're not familiar with things, the terms like Ayanamsha and uh, astrological ages, you can go back to part one and watch both of the first two parts if you want to, or uh, I've also got a link to part two. Okay, but if you're familiar with the terms, and uh, we can proceed. All right. Now, um, first of all, let me mention this inaccuracy. It's actually very minor for charts you're doing now. It's not really going to affect... If you're doing charts of people and you're do, doing the normal kinds of astrology, it's, it's not really going to make any difference. So, you know, no, no worries. Uh, but there are some things. That some Vedic astrologers, for example, will go up to five levels of what are called dasas. These dasas can last a day or less um, for very precise timing. Well, then... Those dasas are based on assuming the Ayanamsha is calculated very precisely. So, in certain situations where we have extreme precision, there could be some difference. Uh, but more often, the problem arises when you go back a long period of time. Um, for example, when you discuss things like when an astrological age begins, and it's over a thousand years ago. Well, this slight difference between doing a sidereal chart based on a fixed star and the way it's normally done is not so small, and you start getting more significant differences. Okay, so now let me explain what it is, what, what the problem is. This table will show you what the problem is. Um, the problem is that the date on which the Lahiri Ayanamsha is zero degrees, on that date, which was October 20, 285. The Lahiri Ayanamsha was exactly zero. It's, actually, it's to the second, um, actually for about a week or so. Um, so this would be one of the days. It doesn't last very long to the second. So right around October 20th, 285, the Lahiri Ayanamsha is zero. Well, if Spica is at zero, Libra zero, zero defines the Lahiri Ayanamsha being zero, it should be exactly zero, Libra zero, zero, but it isn't. It's a minute later. And when Spica is at zero Libra zero zero, it's almost a year earlier, and the Ayanamsha is this value here, 359 degrees 59 minutes 23 seconds. So it's off by almost a year. So what I'm saying is that even though we're told that Spica is at zero Libra zero zero when the Ayanamsha is zero, it's not true. And if we go to the next age, the Aquarian age, when the Lahiri Ayanamsha is exactly 30 degrees, which would mean that Spica should be exactly zero Scorpio, it's off by more than a year. The Lahiri Ayanamsha is 30 degrees on December 29, 2438. It doesn't go into Scorpio until April 20, 2440. So there's over a year difference. So that's confirming what I'm saying. And I'll show you how I got these numbers and these dates, and I'll talk about how accurate these dates are. They're, they're fairly accurate. It's actually hard to get these values um, to the day, but they're they're fairly accurate, and there is a discrepancy. Um, okay, so that's strange. We were always told that spike is at zero Libra zero zero, means the Ayanamsha is zero. That's not true. So what's going on here? 
And this is even more disturbing, uh, the consequences of this. Let me show you this. Let's take another star. I, I put Aldebaran in this table just because it's used by other ionomsias. The Fagan Bradley uses it. Now notice this. When, the, when Spica moves from one sign to another, from zero Libra to zero Scorpio, Aldebaran does not move 30 degrees. It moves 30 degrees and four minutes. So when Spica... The time it takes Spica to go 30, exactly 30 degrees, Aldebaran has already gone more than 30 degrees. What this means is that if you use different ionomsias based on fixed stars, the ionomsias are moving relative to the tropical zodiac at different rates, and the astrological ages would have a different length. Um, so just something to be aware of if you were basing your zodiac on the fixed stars. But now let me show you why the calculations as normally done do not actually use the fixed stars. And these calculations are, that I'm showing you now are done in the Kepler and Sirius software. The Kepler and Sirius software use the Swiss ephemeris. Almost all astrology programs use the Swiss ephemeris because it's very, very accurate. So why does the Swiss ephemeris not actually use Spica when it says it does? Um, I'm going to show you. Because if we used a fixed star as the basis for the sidereal zodiac, it would be rather peculiar and arbitrary because the fixed stars are not fixed. We call them fixed, but they're not completely fixed, and over long periods of time their movement is is greater, obviously. Over time, if something's moving, it's moved a greater length, and, and over hundreds, or, or in this case over a thousand years, the movement is, is significant. Um, so this, let's start with this diagram here first. I've got three pictures, but let's start with this one with the little blue dots and the arrows. The blue dots represent the stars, and the arrows represent what's called their proper motion. They have their own motion. So this star might be moving in this direction, and the long arrow means it moved very far in this direction. This one moved not as far, but to the right. This one moved more upward a little bit, and so on. This one's moving down a little bit down from the right. So they're all moving in a little bit different directions and all at different speeds. Because, let's now look at our, our uh, the Milky Way, the galaxy that our star is a part of, because our star, you've seen these things, you are here, so we're on, on the Earth going around the Sun, and the Sun is one of a huge number of stars that are swirling around the center of the galaxy, the galactic center. So stars are in groups, and those groups of stars move in a circular motion around the galactic center. So just like the Earth is going around the Sun, the Moon is going around the Earth, Earth is going around the Sun, the Sun is going around the galactic center. So, if you were to use Spica at zero Libra to define your zodiac, suppose Spica is over here where my cursor is, and Spica has its own motion. Suppose it's moving away from the Sun in this direction, then you're basing your zodiac on the fact that Lahiri, the fact that Spica happens to be moving in a certain direction. And if um, Aldebaran is wherever it is, suppose it's over here, it's moving in a different direction, you're basing your zodiac on that star and including its motion. So including the motion of the star as determining where the sidereal zodiac is seems a little odd, doesn't it? I mean, you could just, all these stars seem pretty equal, and you're going to take one of them out. Some are bigger and closer, but none of them really stand out. You just take one, and whatever its motion happens to be is going to define your zodiac. It seems very arbitrary. The more obvious thing to do might be to use the galactic center and what's called the galactic plane uh, to base uh, the wobble, and that's what's done. So the Earth is wobbling around. Now we'll look at this picture here in the lower left. Here's the Earth spinning on its axis, wobbles around once every 26,000 years, and what would make sense, I mean just intuitively and seems reasonable, is to consider one wobble to be in relationship to the galactic center, uh, I mean, that would be reasonable, rather than some star, and, and it and has to wobble a little bit more because the star has, has gone a little further, that would seem arbitrary. 
So we don't, the Swiss ephemeris has done a very sensible thing where it does not actually base the Lahiri Ayanamsha on precisely where Spica is. In fact, what it's done is compromise. Look at what it's done. When, when the Lahiri Ayanamsha is zero, Spica is already at zero Libra 01, past it, and that was the uh, beginning of the Pisces age, beginning of the Aquarius age, it's at 29.59, so it's a compromise. Here, Spike is one minute past the zero Libra, and, and here it's one minute before. So it's, it's averaged it. It's taken an average kind of um, result and put Spica as close as it can, but it's still a minute off. Um, now, does that minute make much difference? Um, well, it changes the date when the ages begin. Um, did the Pisces age begin on December 12, 284, or did it begin October 20, 285? If you're going to use Spica as, as the basis, it began in 280, at the end of 284. If you use a position that's close to Spica, but not exactly the same as Spica, and you've taken this compromise uh, position, uh, and, and you're making the sidereal zodiac based on a wobble relative to the galactic center, then you can come up with a date like October 2285. Um, so these are situations where it makes a difference. So normally it's good enough to say that the uh, Lahiri Ayanamsha puts Spica at 0 Libra 0, 0. Technically speaking, most of us do not actually do that because we feel that um, including the arbitrary motion, you know, the particular motion of a star, its own proper motion, and having the zodiac track the motion, the proper motion of some particular star seems a little bit peculiar and odd, giving huge status to what motion one particular star happens to have. doesn't seem reasonable, and that's why it's generally not done. Okay, so that's the deal. Um, one thing that you can conclude from this, possibly, is that the sidereal zodiac probably has something to do more with the galactic center than any particular star, and Spica happens to be close to being opposite some particular point in relation to the galactic center. Something like that. But anyway, this is what's done. You can draw your own conclusions, use your own intuition, have your own ideas. I'm not here to push any political agenda. But I do want to make it clear that, as normally done, the spica is not used precisely to determine the Lahiri Ayanamsha in most forms of astrology. And maybe we should add new Ayanamsha options to programs for people who do, who do want that. It doesn't strike me as an attractive thing to do, but maybe it strikes you as an attractive thing to do. Maybe uh, you would prefer that. Okay, so that's why um, my title of this is Why Sidereal Charts Based on Fixed Stars Are Slightly Inaccurate and It's Not Actually What We Do. It's based more on the wobble of the Earth uh, without being concerned about the proper motion of some particular star is basically left out of it and therefore not based precisely on where that star is. All right. Last thing, um, I gave some dates, and you may wonder where these dates came from. In the previous video, I showed you, using the chart adjust, how I came up with these dates of um, October. Uh, well, actually, I didn't give the, the exact date. Um, I, I just gave the year, but I played around with the time adjust a little bit more, and I got the exact date um, for when the Ayanamsha would be 0 degrees and 30 degrees. And how do I get the dates for the star ingresses? I added a new feature. Um, I, I was able to add it without having to make a new version because it's just another little option to make it more convenient. You can use the star catalog feature in Sirius as well. But let me show you this new little feature. Just a handy thing. While I was thinking about this, I decided, oh, let me just add this feature in case it's helpful to anybody else. It was helpful to me while playing around with this. And what you do is you go to Ephemeris, and I added a new little menu called Fixed Stars Entering Zodiac Signs, and it gives you a list of fixed stars. 
some information here about what this is all about. But I'm telling you anyway, so we don't need to read this. And let's pick Spica. So we pick a fixed R, click OK. And then it only takes a few seconds, and it goes from minus 3,000 to plus 3,000, and tells you exactly when that star enters the, the zodiac signs. Um, and this is the precise date of exactly when it was uh, precisely at zero Libra and zero Scorpio, and back here zero Virgo. Um, and, there, and that's where I got those dates from. It says here December 12 and October 20. Uh, there's the December 12, 284, October, I just had it in my list. So that little list made it easier um, just just to pull those things out. Um, okay, so I mean, I could show you uh, playing around with the time adjustment. I already showed you that and how you can change the dates to these things. Um, I actually use a fixed stars wheel where I added the Ionamsha. Um, oh, maybe I'll just show you that real quickly. Um, different things you can do. So I'm looking at this wheel, and just to play around with it, I'll show you. This can be uh, can be pretty cool. Um, what I did is I right clicked and I selected a fixed stars wheel. There's so many things you can do in the Kepler and Sirius software. You can also use, like I said, the star catalog. And then I decided um, because I can see where I wanted to see where. Um, uh, Spica and Aldebaran R. So if I go to zero Libra, there it is, zero Libra, zero, zero, because I already know that. I already produced that listing that tells me. And then just for fun, I went to customize, went to page designer. Let me drag this down so you can see it on the area that I'm capturing for the video. And then I, then you can just do whatever you want. I added this technical lunation table all kinds of tables you can add, and then I can right click on it, it just stuck it in there, I can drag it around, and I removed everything but the Ayanamsha, there's all kinds of things you can put in this little table, and then you click on done, and click OK, and now I've got a customized uh, uh, fixed stars wheel, that also tells me the ion option, because by, by default it doesn't. So this is nice to know about. Here you just right click and go and, you know, add things and move things around and so on. And so now when I go into time adjust and I'm playing around with these things, and for example, I want to change the date uh, to October 20, 285, I can just go up here and put October 20, October 20, 285, apply the date it instantly updates it and this shows me the Ayanamsha exactly zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds and I can look at where um, Spica is and here it is at zero Libra, zero one. It's just one more way to look at things. So many ways to look at things. Uh, and I also, and that's how I got the Aldebaran position which is around 15 Taurus and there it is, Aldebaran 15 Taurus 55 and there it is, October 20 um, 285, 15 towards 55. And one thing I want to mention also, before I forget, is that these dates, I mentioned before, these dates are, are probably not perfect. Um, let me show you something. When, when we're in here, let me get out of this, uh, time adjust, and let's go back to this new feature that I added for the ingresses. If I right click to bring up this screen again for making selections, I didn't read these instructions, but uh, one of the things that's mentioned in these instructions and information is that different authoritative, I'll read it, note that different, the last paragraph, note that different authoritative sources for times that stars ingress into signs may vary slightly because even a few seconds of arc difference in the calculations can change the date by several weeks. Uh, also, some sor sources may uh, take into account only precession of the equinoxes and not the proper motion of the stars. So that's something to be aware of, particularly some of the older astronomy and astrology software may not be including the proper motion of the stars um, and also uh, recalculating the um, uh, obliquity of the ecliptic for the date. Sometimes the calculation is done for the beginning of the century. Anyway, this can all throw the calculations off a little bit. 
So we have uh, very accurate data of what the motion of the stars is. It's all included. The obliquity is recalculated on the date. So these dates are pretty good. You, you're going to get dates from other good sources that may be a month or two different because even seconds of difference, um, slight differences in in the fourth and fifth digit of, of accuracy of measuring the speed of the actual proper motion. Anyway, you get some slight differences. But, but this is very, very accurate. Um, and certainly, these dates are clearly radically different. Um, we have over a year difference between the time Spike is at zero Scorpio and when the ion option is 30 degrees exactly. Well, thank you very much, my friends, for listening. I hope that helps understand some of this. God bless. Namaste.